Hey, what's up? It's PT here. Hope you guys are having a great week. Thought I would uh, jump on again. Uh, life is kind of leveling out a bit. Not calming down, but leveling out. And so I uh, have more time to think, more time to process. And um, I've been thinking a lot about some of the things that have helped uh, just people succeed in their faith period. And some of the things that have kind of messed people up. And one of the things that came to my mind over the past week is the survivor's mentality. Um, I know we celebrate it and to survive anything, I've survived some stuff and to survive anything is incredible. But there becomes a place where I like to call a tipping point where the mentality that you use to survive won't help you thrive. Actually, there comes a point in your walk, in your life, whether you know Christ or not, that some of the ways that you think or have been trained to think to get through situations will derail you as you try to move into your destiny. And it's really kind of crazy. Um, I think about the cycles that I lived in. I, the first nine years of my faith, I just constantly lived in cycles of defeat, could never get past the ceiling because over and over again, I just kept making the same stupid mistakes. And I love to blame the devil. I rebuked, I love the way Joyce puts it, I rebuked till my rebuker was worn out. And rebuking the devil didn't change it. I kept ending up in the same messes with the same situations. And it wasn't until God began to teach me about salvation and this process of sanctification. See, salvation in the moment, I am saved, his spirit lives in me, and I am now a citizen of heaven. I am now, uh, I have a new life, I have a, a new destiny, God, my old things are past, my old sins are past, spiritually. But there's a process I have to go through in my soul that if I don't do it, I could live 30 years spiritually free and in the natural look like I'm just as bound as I was before I knew Christ. I think about all of the people who are frustrated in their faith, can't seem to get past a certain hurdle or an addiction or a, a challenge in their career or their parenting or their marriage. And it's not God's fault. As a matter of fact, you think you're waiting on God when God's actually waiting on you. And I think about this whole thing of renewing our mind. You know, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 talks about be ye transformed. Be ye transformed. Transformation, metamorphosis is another uh, definition for that word that I can be totally changed into a being that was never created before when I allow God to do the work of renewing my mind. Uh, no. Not allow God when I do the work of renewing my mind. I love this story in uh, John chapter 11, verse 40 through 44. It's Jesus. And Jesus is with Martha and Mary, and his boy Lazarus is near death. As a matter of fact, uh, when Jesus comes on the scene, Lazarus is dead. Martha and Mary, you know, they meet him and they begin to have a dialogue about if you were here, this wouldn't have happened. All those different things that had gone into making this moment what it is. Jesus told them, listen, you're about to see the glory of God revealed in this moment. Jesus steps through all the mourners only like only Jesus could. He stepped into the spot in all of his Jesusness. Hey, do me a favor, young, young guy, over there, remove the stone. And they look at him and like, wait, Lazarus has been dead for four days. He stinks. There's no bringing him back. And for some of y'all, that's what people said about you. They said your life was so far gone, so messed up, so jacked up, that you could never recover. 
that God can never restore you, that you can never have a future, never have a career, never have a marriage, never have a life. They said you've been dead for so long, they counted you out. But come on, Jesus is the greatest comeback story of them all. And he issues comebacks on a regular basis. And he walks up to this tomb of Lazarus, who was now dead for four days. Everybody count the situation out. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, who was dead, comes to life again. See, the Lazarus coming back to life is a picture of our spirits that were once dead without God. And when he called us, yep, by name, he called you. When he called you, when he called me, he brought us back to life. And now our spirits are alive to God and we are connected with God. But there was an extra step. The Bible says that in this verse 42, Lazarus comes wobbling out of the grave in the Passion Version. Why? Because although Lazarus is alive, he is still wrapped in his old grave clothes. See, when they, in those times, when they wrapped the body, they had different preservatives in place to keep the body, to help the body survive. And what we've done in our lives is although Jesus has called us by name, we have now been considered partakers of eternal life. We are saved, sanctified, filled with his spirit. Some of us still have those grave clothes on. What do those grave clothes represent? Because Jesus had to tell them, now go and remove the grave clothes. Loose him and let him go. Why was that so significant? Because even though Lazarus was alive, he was still wrapped in those old survival clothes. And I want to tell you today that you are, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you are saved, you are headed to heaven, but you're still wrapped in those old grave clothes. Those old grave clothes represent those old mindsets, the old survivor's mentality, the things that you use. Can I tell you this? The, the mindset that you had to survive that abuse won't serve you in the boardroom. The mindset that you had to get through that divorce won't serve you with the customers that you're trying to get to buy your product. You have to cross over from survival mentality to a thriving mentality. And to do that, I've got to do it. I can't beg and say, God, do it for me. No. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is something that we have to participate in. It's something we have to do. And so I'm just going to give you these three quick things before I jump off that you can begin this process. And then I want to kind of help walk you through it over the course of time. The first thing you have to do is you have to identify you have to identify the areas in your life that you are still in survival mode that are not allowing you to move forward. Once you identify those areas, see, you can't, you can't overcome what you don't look at first. It may be painful to look at some of those things, but you've got to identify them so that you can do the next thing which is acknowledge them. Acknowledge. It's time for you to acknowledge. Yeah, it wasn't your five husbands or five wives. It wasn't your five jobs. It isn't your kids. The world isn't just against you. It's you. And you've got to acknowledge that I'm owning this. I'm the one with the bad attitude. I'm the one that has a defeated mentality. I'm the one that's insecure. I'm the one that's filled with fear. It's me, God. Help me. See, when I identify and I acknowledge it, acknowledge it to God and acknowledge it to myself. And for some, and this has been helpful for me, 
I acknowledge that somebody I love, somebody that's close, that can hold me accountable with some of the things that I do and the way that I think. And after I've acknowledged it, I take that issue, that thought, I get into the Word of God, allow God to retrain the way that I think, and then I do this last thing. I trust. I trust that the God who is there the whole time, that helped me survive the abuse, that helped me make it through the divorce, that helped me make it through the whatever I've walked through is the same God that's pushing me forward. And I can trust him. I can trust him with my, my relationships. I can trust him with my career. I can trust him with my marriage. I can trust him with my kids. I can trust God and I must have an anchor for my trust and the anchor for my trust is the word of God. And so today, today, come on, today. No, not tomorrow, not next week. Let's go. Let's let's get out of survival mode and get in the thriving mode because God has more in store for you. Identify the issue, acknowledge it to God, yourself and a close loved one. Get in the word of God and get the anchor for trust to move forward and experience the life that God has for you. Oh my God, he has so much in store for you. And you, I wanna say this last thing. You didn't make you survive anything. It was him the whole time that kept you and walked you through. And if he can help you survive, he's there to help you thrive but you got to trust him. Can I pray for you? <laughs> Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. God, the pain, the disappointment, and the dysfunction, it's real. But today, God, today we identify, we acknowledge, and we trust you with every part of us. And we believe that we are moving forward in you, being transformed by the renewing of our mind in your word, and living the life that you called us to. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, God bless you all. Have an amazing week and weekend, and I will see you soon. God bless.